Fairlight is the doll of the future. And more importantly, it is completely free. And how much does it cost? Um, it's free. Blackmagic acquired Fairlight back in 2016, and a year later integrated the DAW into their powerhouse of an editor. A good place to start is a brief understanding of the user interface. The Fairlight user interface has both dual and single monitor mode. When using a single monitor, the Fairlight page displays all of the auto tracks of your project with an expanded mixer and monitoring controls that makes it easy to edit your audio. If you have a second monitor, the audio page has a dual monitor layout that gives you the most space for the mixer and audio meters on one screen and a full screen timeline on the other. Starting at the top left of the toolbar, the media pool button shows and hides the media pool. This serves as the repository of all of the audio clips in your project. The media pool has a preview player letting you view the clip, add marks to log them, and set in and out points in preparation for editing them into the timeline via drag and drop. There's actually three kinds of bins in the media pool. Simple bins are manually populated by importing media into Fairlight. Power Power bins are hidden by default, but are shared among all of the projects in your current library. Smart bins are procedurally populated bins, meaning that you can filter the contents of the media pool by metadata whenever you select a smart bin. Moving to the right, the effects library option opens the audio effects panel of the effects library. On the Fairlight page, the effects library displays both the built-in Fairlight effects audio plugins that accompany DaVinci Resolve, as well as whatever third-party audio effects are available in the workstation. Fairlight effects are built-in audio processing effects that are fully cross-platform on all platforms that DaVinci Resolve supports. Stepping again to the right, the index is an interface that lists all of the clips of the current edit, all of the tracks, and markers in the current timeline. Using these lists, multiple items can be selected, tracks can be managed, and marker notes can be viewed with ease. Each of these three categories of information is displayed in separate panels that can be selected across the top. Next, you can access the sound library panel panel from the interface toolbar. Use this for browsing sound effects libraries either on your system or an SAN that you're connected to. It's capable of scanning specific file paths to catalog available sound files and their metadata, and storing this data within a project library to use when searching for the sound effect within that library. Next, the Fairlight page of DaVinci Resolve has a very sophisticated interface for doing ADR, or Automatic Dialogue Replacement. When open, the ADR interface consists of three panels to the left of the timeline, a list panel, a record panel, and a setup panel. And while I'm not gonna go into much detail as to what that is, in the future we will be doing a video that covers this. The mixer button shows and hides the mixer to the right of the timeline. The audio mixer provides controls you can use to assign track channels to output channel, adjust EQ and dynamics, add filters and fair light effects, set levels, record automation, pan stereo, surround, and immersive audio, as well as mute and solo tracks. The meters button shows and hides the panel along the top of the page that gives you a quick reference to all of your audio channels. At the left, a row of audio meters correspond to the mixer, one meter for every audio track in the timeline. To the right are the bus meters where all of the buses appear. The last set of meters there are the loudness meters. The control room meter is the main output level of the program and the loudness meter measures the loudness according to a user's chosen scale. A small panel at the far right shows the frame of video at the position of the playhead. You can expand the viewer into its own floating window by clicking the button in the lower right hand corner. The metadata button displays the metadata editor, which lets you edit the metadata of the selected clips in the Fairlight page. This includes things like date created, camera, reel, scene, shot, take, assigning a clip color, renaming the file, adding comments, and other information that you might want to put in there as well. Finally, the inspector button will show and hide the inspector from which you can edit different clip attributes. Clip specific audio parameters like volume, pan, pitch, and equalization can be adjusted and animated in the inspector. Whenever you click somewhere on the user interface, you give that panel something called focus. This allows you to use keyboard shortcuts to do something within that specific panel. A highlight will appear at the top edge to show you which panel has focus. The audio timeline shows all audio channels and tracks of the selected timeline differently than the edit page will. In a one channel per track format, it's optimized for audio mastering and cannot be closed. You can zoom in or out of the audio waveforms of one or more tracks, which makes the waveforms easier to see, but will not affect the audio levels of the clips selected. The toolbar lets you choose 
different modes or execute commands such as placing markers and flags. There's a variety of ways you can customize the timeline to better see what you're working on. For instance, using fixed playhead mode in the timeline will make the playhead fixed in place as the timeline will scroll by. A checkbox in the timeline view options drop down menu lets you display small versions of the video tracks for reference. Checkboxes in the timeline view options also let you show a video scroller and up to two audio scrollers at the bottom of the timeline. No matter where you are in DaVinci Resolve, undo and redo commands let you back out of steps you've taken or commands that you've executed and reapply them if you happen to change your mind. DaVinci Resolve keeps the entire history of things you've done since creating or opening a particular project and it allows you to revert the file if necessary. When you close a project, its entire undo history is purged and the next time you begin work on the project, its undo history starts anew. While Fairlight is a cherry on top for Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve, this video is just an overview and we've really just scratched the surface of all of the information that's there. If you don't want to miss these videos, consider subscribing.